Hey everyone, Felipe here. Welcome to another Tower Saviors GNN review video. This week we have some really amazing and exciting news, which is going to be a major anime collaboration with Tower of Saviors. And this time it is going to be Jujutsu Kaisen, which I'm personally very excited about. So without further ado, let's get started with this week's GNN and see what's in store for us. So we have a new collaboration or new crossover with a new trait, the Jujutsu Sorcerer. This is going to be the archetype specific team skills and things like that. So pretty standard for collaborations nowadays. We do have the Descent of Roman Sukuna, the King of Curses, which I'm going to assume is going to be an ultimate stage, but we will have to see. So starting on April 24th, after maintenance, we will have the new crossover, which will introduce the eight Jujutsu Kaisen characters to the game. And our first jackpot card is going to be Kojo, uh, second jackpot card is going to be Itadori, and this dude. So I'm guessing um, because there are four characters in this banner, these are four jackpot cards. So I think Madhead is going with the route of introducing four jackpot cards per crossover, which I'm not particularly excited about. but. Uh, yeah, rare characters, Gojo Satoru, Yuiji Tadori, Megumi Fushiguro, and Kento Nanami are going to be the four jackpot cards. Not exactly super happy about it because it's just a way to get more diamonds. Although, if they're all super powerful, then that is going to be great. But from the Attack on Titan series, they were pretty good, but not... Not all the jackpots were super powerful, if you know what I mean. So having four jackpots in one seal could be good, but personally, I am not happy about it, but I can see people being happy about it because it is more efficient with your diamonds. Uh, but yeah, we do have the new trait, which is going to be the Jujutsu Sorcerer. This is going to be when both the leader and ally are Jujutsu Sorcerer members. We do have a specific um, team skill for them. This is going to be according to the number of sorcerers in the team. At the end of each round, cursed energy will appear at random positions to the max of six cursed energy for six Jujutsu sorcerer members. For each roof to dissolve in a cursed energy position, combo count increases plus two, cursed energy at that position will disappear. Jujutsu sorcerer members damage dealt to elves and demons times two additionally. And upon the skill activation of a Jujutsu Sorcerer member, invisible enemies will be revealed. Honestly, this is a pretty good team skill and a really good passive because this means that everyone will be able to benefit from a combo count increase. And typically that is a very good team skill to have because a lot of enemies in the game have high combo shields and not only that, a high combo will give you higher damage and higher recovery. And because of that, no matter what Jujutsu Sorcerer you're running, you will have access to this combo count increase. This is reminiscent of Pompeii and his like uh, sealed areas or for example uh, Kehun with his weapons. So as long as you dissolve them, you get extra benefits and honestly that's not bad at all. The fact that you also get extra damage to elves and demons is going to be situational but it's a good passive to have anyways. And being able to reveal invisible enemies without the need of a sniper is also really good because sniper active skills are not the best in terms of utility. So the fact that you can reveal invisible enemies without using a sniper is also going to be really good. And not only that, you can use any active skill from any Jujutsu Sorcerer member, which means that it is going to be pretty good utility in my opinion. But yeah, so now let's go over to the first jackpot card which is going to be Satoru Gojo, which is going to be I think the bigger jackpot card from the series. Here, for this card he is going to be a dark human and his leader skill is the following. Human attack times 10, HP and recovery times 2. Jujutsu Sorcerer members, HP attack and uh, HP and attack times 1.5 additional. By dissolving three types of runestones, team attack increases by five times. Jujutsu members' attack will be dealt regardless of initial shield. 
while runestones also possess 50% of all runestones. Honestly, this is a really good leader skill at the baseline because you have a times 10 attack bonus baseline. You also get a 1.5 bonus for Jujutsu Sorcerers and a times 5 team attack bonus by dissolving 3 types of runestones, which is honestly a very easy condition. Not only that, you do ignore initial shield thanks to your leader skill. So this means that you don't have to rely on team skills and you can even ignore initial shield if Gojo or Satoru Gojo is your ally. And that is going to be really powerful because if you are limited on diamonds and you use Gojo as an ally, you are still able to benefit from this initial shield break. So that is pretty good in my opinion. And runestone possession effect, you know, pretty standard for um, jackpot leaders or meta leaders to have because it allows you to have attacking runes no matter what card you're running. For his team skill, let's see how it complements his, oh god this is so long, um, his leader skill. When the leader is Satoru Gojo with a Jujutsu member as an ally, you get the following team skill. Extend runestone movement time by 5 seconds regardlessly. Burning sticky black holes are nullified. Dodge the first attack of each and oh wow that's good. Runestones of the attribute of Satoru Gojo will increase by 200%. By dissolving 5 or more groups of runestones in the first batch, Jujutsu Sorcerer members' skill cooldowns decrease by 1. At the end of each round, 4th and 6th columns are turned into enchanted runestones, the same as the 5th column. By dissolving runestones of the members' attributes in the team, team attack increases by 5 times. Satoru Gojo and members of those attributes damage will be dealt regardless of Puzzle Shield and Quintet Elemental Shield. Wow. You also acquired the domain expansion, which is kind of nice that they're adding it to the game. That is a very good skill that they had in the anime, and I'm happy that it's ported to Tower of Saviors too. Domain expansion unlimited void. Satoru Gojo skill cooldown decreased by 5. Attack of L all enemies will be lowered to 0 until they are defeated. What? <laughs> Restore all runestones to normal state. Turn all runestones into enchanted human runes. Combo count increases by 25. Satoru Gojo attack increases by 5 times. Damage can overpower enemies, and damage will be regardless of defense. And effects 4 and 6 stay within the wave. So that is going to be these over here. Oh wow, that is broken. Oh wow, when both the ally and leader are Satoru Gojo, alter the attribute of Gojo in 2nd, 3rd, 4th column into fire, earth, light, and water. So honestly, wow, okay. Oh, whew, that, oh my god, this card is absolutely insane. What the heck? Wow, okay, um, yeah. So, the leader skill itself is already like pretty good. And that, this team skill though, it's absolutely broken. You ignore burning sticky and black holes, which is really good. Uh, any good leader nowadays has to ignore burning and sticky because it helps you ignore a lot of things. Rules of movement time, pretty standard. But you get a times 5 team attack bonus with a very easy condition which is going to bring your damage output to higher levels. You ignore puzzle, you ignore quintet, you ignore the first attack of each enemy and this is a dodge so it doesn't, is not affected by, by uncontrollable enemies or you don't have to inactivate enemies. So this is busted. If you have played Anya you know how good this is. Um, yeah, skill cooldown minus one, really nice bonus to have as well. And the domain expansion is going to be super powerful as well. I guess it is balanced by the fact that you have to consume one activation of your Dragonic Compulsion though. But this is an absolutely busted um, craft skill. Cooldown minus five, which is already like pretty good. But here, 
attackable enemies will be lowered to zero until they are defeated, which means that they will not deal damage at all because their attack is zero and it stays in play until they are defeated so which means you have unlimited rounds to kill them and if that was not enough you have a combo count increase of, tw of 25 which is going to increase your damage your attack increases by five times for gojo which is also going to kill the enemy faster damage can overpower enemies as well and the damage stay within the wave and this is really good as well because this effect right here the attack lower to zero will only affect one hp bar and this effect right here is designed for enemies with multiple hp bars if you use this craft skill at the beginning of a three hp bar enemy only one of the hp bars is going to be is going to have their attack lower to zero when they die this effect disappears however thanks to this effect right here the human runestone enchanted combo count increase and the attack times five is going to stay active throughout all three hp bars and that is going to be super beneficial for boss enemies that have multiple hp bars so that is an absolutely insane team skill to have um and then this one right here both the leader and ally are gojo satoru this honestly is interesting because it means that a mono Satoru Gojo team is going to be pretty viable. And not, well, not a mono Gojo Satoru, but having multiple copies of Satoru Gojo is going to be really good because it allows you to include a team member in your team that can change attributes depending on where you put him. And say, for example, you need to break a five element shield or yeah, or you need an extra element. You can add a second Gojo Satoru, Satoru Gojo to your team and have him become the element that you want. So that, in my opinion, is going to be very interesting. The only thing that's holding back this um, team skill is the fact that you need two copies or more of Satoru Gojo. And given that he is a jackpot card, that might not be exactly the easiest to do, especially if you don't have that many diamonds. But yeah, overall, I think he is going to be a very powerful leader. He has very good damage output. He has good utility. He has an insane craft skill. And yeah, overall, I think he is going to be a very powerful leader. For his active skill, we have a CD6 active skill with a giant paragraph in there. For the active skill, we have Satori Gojo release its lock skill, so it will not be locked, it will not be fatigued, it will not be hypnotized, and it will not be windswept. Okay, wow. <sighs> Explode three columns on the right to generate enchanted light, water, and heart runes. Explode the three columns on the left to generate enchanted dark, fire, and earth runes. The character's attack increases by five times. And after dissolving runestones, the first and second batches of runestones to be dropped will be enchanted runestones of the character's attribute. The character's damage will be dealt regardless of fixed combo shield and anti-runestone shield first batch. So, this active skill is all honestly really good as well. And not only is it good for a Gojo team, it is really good for any team, really. Um, this is because the character increases its attack by 5 times, but it also releases its skill, its fatigue, it's hypnotized and windswept state. So it means that even though your entire team is nullified, you can still activate Gojo and you can still launch a really powerful attack. Not only that, you get a fixed board and you get guaranteed sky drop of the character's attribute. And in most cases, this is going to be dark, but if you take into account uh, his second team skill with the alter the attribute of Satoru Gojo, it means that you are able to generate as many runestones of any attribute that you want as long as you have two Satoru Gojos in your team or you have Satoru Gojo, uh, yeah, two Satoru Gojos in your team. And this is really useful because if you have something like a 60 water rune um, shield where the enemy requires you to dissolve 60 water runes before dealing damage, 
you can just put Satoru Gojo in the fifth column, activate his active skill, and you are going to get an easy 60 water runes. So this is going to be really powerful as well. But overall, I think it is going to be a really good active skill, even as a member in other teams. And because of that, you also ignore fixed combo shield and anti rune store shield first batch on a CD6 skill. That is going to be really fast and really good in my opinion. So, you know, that is an amazing active skill. And if it weren't a jackpot card, I think it's definitely a must get in terms of uh, active skill. But we have to see the entire series before I recommend this active skill. I do think this is a really good active skill and a really good leader. And I'm inclined to recommend him to pull. But it also depends on what else you are able to get in this seal so that you're not really wasting your diamonds, you know? So yeah, we have bonding skills, which, you know, two extra attacks, eh, not bad. And skill cooldown minus one, also not bad. But yeah, next we have Yuji Itadori. He is going to be a light human and has the following leader skill. Jujutsu Sorcerer and light members attack times 7, HP and recovery times 2.2. By dissolving light or heart runes, team attack increases by 4. Each member launches an extra attack of its counter attribute as much as 1.5 of its attack. As far as leader skills go, and as far as jackpot cards go, this one is pretty lukewarm. A times 7 attack bonus right now is not that high, especially if you compare it to Gojo's times 10, you know? I guess the, the plus side of it is that you also get a 1.5 attack increase um, because you're launching an extra attack and you have an easy condition of dissolving light or heart runes to get a times 4 team attack however that is just a baseline of times 28 which is honestly not that high in the current state of the game <laughs> just just look at gojo's though that is a 15 this is a 75. This is a times 75 team uh, leader skill baseline without counting his other times fives in the team. And so, you know, Yuji Tadori, not kind of, I don't know. The leader skill is a little bit eh, because <laughs> it doesn't really have anything else going for it. Just the extra attack, but no utility, no runestone possession effect. So let's see the team skill to see if it's safe by it. When there is Yuji Tadori, Megumi Fujiguro, and Nobara Kugasaki, Kugisaki in the team, you get a 1.5 uh, stat bonus. Uh, not bad. Okay, there we go. The leader is Yuji Itadori, and the ally is a Jujutsu Sorcerer member. Extend runes of movement time regardless by 2 seconds. Yuji Itadori, HP, attack, and recovery basic value will be increased by 2. The team will not be poisoned, nice. All runestones also possess the effect of Jujutsu Sorcerer members attributes in the team. Jujutsu Sorcerer members will be uh, damage will be dealt regardless of fixed combo shield. When the runestone movement ends at the specific range below the HP bar, Black Flash will be triggered. Different effects will be granted when Black Flash is triggered multiple times. More than one time, Yuji Tadori, Kento Nanami, and Nobara Kugisaki damage will be dealt regardless of enemy specific damage reducing resistance. Two times, attack times five for the uh, previously mentioned members. Three times, combo and EX combo count increases by five. More than four times, damage received minus 40%. The counting resets when runestone movement time ends outside the specific range two times consecutively. Um, here. The leader is Ayoi Todo and the ally is Yuji Tadori. Skill minus 6 after entering the stage um, for Ayoi Todo and Yuji Tadori. At the beginning and at the end of each round, turn the first column into light, sixth column into heart. All runestones possess the effect of light and heart runestones. And by dissolving 15 runestones or more, Ayoi Todo and Yuji Tadori skill cooldown minus 1 and damage will be dealt regardless of initial shield. And we get the Jujutsu Sorcerer exclusive. Okay, so honestly, he might not be that bad. I think his damage output is still pretty low considered considering like his jackpot status. However, this thing right here. <sighs> Enemy specific damage reducing resistance. 
there are not that many cards in the game that can ignore that and the fact that he can ignore that on a team skill is actually pretty good um it is situational because madhead doesn't really add that type of enemy skill that often to the game but it is going to be pretty um powerful to have the way he plays the way this um team skill reads it is going to be similar to the hatsune miku series where there is a place where you need to end your movement on your hp bar and you have to time it so that you hit that specific place and honestly kind of nice that they're bringing that back but uh you know it does it is a little bit restrictive in terms of rules of movement especially if you have sticky or burning or a step count things like that it makes it a little bit weird to do but it is still a pretty fun play style uh honestly the team skill is pretty good not poisoning you get stat boosts um and the black flash itself is going to be a pretty fun mechanic um all things considered though it does seem that yuji itadori does benefit only these three members which is pretty nice kento nanami nobara kugisaki and yuji itadori uh, other than that i think your team is not going to get as much value out of it because like i said the damage output from his leader skill is kind of low for a jackpot card but if you take into account black flash it does become decent but that only includes these three members right here so uh in order to get the most out of this team you have to include these three uh, members and honestly i cannot comment on how that uh, how good that is because i haven't tried it yet but yeah yuji tadori kind of interesting as a leader uh not in the way i see it he doesn't seem that good of a leader let's take a look at his active skill though cd6 explode all runestones frozen runestones and petrified runes to generate a fixed board uh, of enchanted runes which is pretty good for one round the character's attack increases by four times launches an extra water attack as much as two times its own attack if the enemy is defeated yuji tadori and aoi todo skill cooldown minus three honestly to me <laughs> this seems like a not a jackpot card really the active skill is nice but i've seen regular cards have this type of active skill so you know it, it is a good active skill uh good utility exploding all rooms to generate fixed board self attack increase and extra attacks um not bad but also not super good not broken i mean it's still good uh cd6 is pretty fast but not exactly what i had in mind for a jackpot card granted he is like learning like the protagonist of the anime and so he gets he's like learning his skills and things like that but you know overall i think as a leader and as a member he's a little bit underwhelming especially his leader skill uh the damage output seems a little bit low um in terms of base multipliers and team skill multipliers and his active skill is pretty vanilla and not super interesting i think you know not bad thing if you have aoi todo the combined skill becomes better restore all runestones to normal state restore crack positions explode all runes to generate enchanted human fixed board you ignore equal combo shield and puzzle shield and runestones can be aligned by, by uh, aligning two or more of them and the effect stays in play until 20 runestones of one type are dissolved so basically his combined skill is 10 times better than his normal active skill and because his normal active skill does decrease the cooldown of your itadori and aoi todo honestly having aoi todo and itadori together is going to be the move because otherwise his active skills and his team skills are not exactly that great he doesn't have that much utility 
he doesn't have uh, that much shield breaking potential so honestly you know the only utility you have is not poisoned um damage reducing resistance which is very situational and combo increase and and uh initial shield right oh but that is uh if you have Aoi Toto as a leader so not even that so honestly as a leader and as a member his his active skill doesn't really break shields either <laughs> so this combined skill is a hundred times better than his entire kit in my opinion uh and so yeah just use this active skill however it is a combined skill so it's a little bit less accessible all things considered uh but yeah so that is going to be yuji tadori uh can't say i'm impressed by him but let's take a look at the rest of the seal and see if things get better the next jackpot card we have is megumi fushiguro which is going to be another dark human which is an interesting choice given that Gojo is a dark human too, so there's going to be some clashing over there. For the leader skill we have, Jujutsu Sorcerer and Dark members attack increases by 8 times, HP and recovery times 2. When 4 or more combos are made, team attack increases by 4 times additionally. When 8 combos are made, team attack times 2 additionally. When there is an additional effect in play, damage received minus 30%. So, this one is already better than Yuji Itadori, just by the leader skill, because your multipliers, 8 combos, it is going to be a little bit hard to hit, but keep in mind that the Jujutsu Sorcerer active uh, team skill exclusive gives you plus 2 combo count uh, for the cursed areas. And so, if you do 6 combos and a cursed area, that's already 8 combos, and that is going to bring you to max damage multiplier. And that is going to be a 32, 64, hit baseline of 64 times that attack bonus for just your leader skill. And so this is already better than your <laughs> uh, Hitadori Yuji because, um, you know, you are also just banking on the black flash in order to trigger your max multiplier. So <laughs> Megumi Fushiguro is going to be so much better. For his team skill though, we also have a stat boost, but here, this is the thing that we're interesting about, uh, the when the leader is Megumi Fushiguro. Alter the attributes of Jujutsu Sorcerer members into dark. Ooh, nice. Megumi Fushiguro, skill CD minus 7 after entering the stage. Rooms of movement time increases regardlessly by 2 seconds. At the end of each round, turn the bottom row into enchanted dark runes. All runestones also possess the effect of dark runes. Dark runes also possess the effect of heart runes. By dissolving dark runes, team attack increases by 4. Damage will be dealt regardless of puzzle shield, and Jujutsu members launch an extra attack of its original attribute. Acquire the domain expansion Chimera Shadow Garden. Megumi Fushiguro enters A and stays in a hyper state for 2 rounds. Megumi Fushiguro attack increases by 5 times. Damage can power over en overpower enemies, and damage will be dealt regardless of defense. You also get a limited runestone movement time, and modify runestones touch while moving to become human runestones. If there is a black and white zone in play, dodge the first attack of the enemy each round. FX 2 to 5, stay, within, stay in play within the wave. This can be activated by at the expense of one fully... Uh, one activation of your dragon in compulsion honestly this card is actually pretty good um while gojo is has really good multipliers he is limited by the fact that he can only run humans however megumi fushiguro can run any dark members in the game in his teams and that is actually pretty good because dark attribute actually has a pretty good pool of cards to choose from and not only that, you do get um, a lot of damage output. You also get a lot of utility with the whole ignore puzzle shield and extra attacks of each of its um, original attribute. So in theory, you could also break five element shields if you build your team correctly. 
um, you also ignore the domain expansion is also pretty good with um, hyper state and attack increase for Megumi Fujigoro and unlimited runes to movement time and the fact that effects 2 to 5 stay in play within the wave same thing about the HP bars you can use this with enemies that have multiple HP bars but it also means that your time tunnel will stay in play until you kill the enemy and if you watch my videos you know that time tunnel is in my opinion one of the best active skills in the game because it allows you to do a lot of things so the fact that you get time tunnel for five rounds that is going to be uh pretty busted so honestly as a leader i think megumi fushiguro is actually really good as well the only thing that i'm sad about is that it shares an attribute with gojo which means that um you don't exactly need two dark leaders but i still think it might be worth getting both really uh for his active skill holy crap cd7 active skill with a giant paragraph in the middle okay so tap a shikigami icon in the magic circle to change the character's form so this is going to be similar to dagda where you choose a form and you get a different effect i'm guessing so for totality you get Turn all runestones into 10 enchanted runestones of each specific attribute, light, dark, and heart. Okay, for 3 rounds, smog will be nullified, damage received from step damage is lowered to 0, character's attack increases by 3.5, character's damage will be dealt regardless of defense. For new it, explode all runestones to generate human runes, electrify all enemies for 1 round to inactivate them, damage dealt to them will be increased by 2 times. If it's a water enemy, damage dealt will be increased to 3.5 times instead. Max Elephant, deal a water damage of 50 million to all enemies, regardless of defense. For 3 rounds, damage received from burning will be lowered to 1. All members, attack increased by 1.5 times, damage will be dealt regardless of duo, trio, quartet, and quintet elemental shield. Toad, turn all runestones into enchanted runes. Jujutsu Sorcerer members, Except Megumi Fushiguro, skill cooldown minus 2, and for 3 rounds, the key will be nullified. So, okay, this active skill is absolutely broken, and holy crap, that is. <laughs> this is. There's no reason this card should have this good of an active skill. Keep in mind that you can activate this from the get go because you get a CD minus 7 after entering the stage. But yeah, CD7 is going to be a little bit long. <laughs> but the amount of utility you have... I guess the only bad thing is the fact that you can only activate one form at a time. But this is still like very, very good. Like, as long as your active skill is ready, you can counter a lot of enemy skills when they come out and this is going to make team building really easy for a jujutsu kaisen team because like if you see oh this enemy has quint element and shield okay i can just plan to activate megumi in this round things like that you know but the fact that you can choose from all these forms it's absolutely insane you have step damage ignore you have smog ignore you have electrify, you have sticky nullify, you have a sniper, you ignore burning, and you also ignore duo, trio, quartet, quintet, elemental shield. Honestly, this active skill is great. This is really good. This card really does deserve the jackpot status because the leader skill, the team skills are pretty good, and the active skill is also pretty good as well. So this is definitely worth the jackpot name. Uh, bonding skills you know yeah 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 pretty good okay kento nanami the last and fourth jackpot card when the team has only jujutsu sorcerer members or humans team attack increases by seven hp and recovery increases by 3.7 when seven combos are made team attack times seven additionally damage received minus 30 percent very basic leader skill uh, still better than Yuji Itadori's because baseline he already has a times 49 and the 7 combos again because of the Jujutsu specific archetype team skill is going to be very easy to hit. 
for his team skill we have extend runestone moment time by 7 seconds all runestones also possess the effect of light runes light runes also possess the effect of heart runes combo count increases by 7 negative state of electrified runes will be cleared while uh, moving and turn into enchanted light human runes kento nanami damage will be dealt regardless of anti runestone shield first batch by dissolving one or more group of seven or more runestones leader and ally attack increases by seven each uh, and each launches three extra attacks by dissolving one group of seven or more light runes damage will be dealt regardless of fixed combo shield very fitting because his name is nanami or Nana being 7, <laughs> so everything is 7 from his leader skill to his team skill to his combo increase to his um, <laughs> team skill right here. Honestly, this seems like a little bit of a gimmick card with all the 7s involved. That being said, he is a pretty good leader, not super broken, but I do think he is going to be a slightly above average. His at damage output seems pretty good. Um, he has combo count and his team skill here although dissolving a group of more than seven runestones is a little bit hard it can still be very useful to ignore fixed combo shield as a baseline however other than that he doesn't really have much more going for him he has electrified runes and combo count increase but there's no oh an anti runestone first batch that is pretty good in my opinion but honestly, um, you know, a nice jackpot card. I can definitely see him clearing uh, some stages with no problem, but I don't know. Um, I think Megumi and Gojo definitely take the spotlight in terms of jackpot cards. These ones might be better members in my opinion. So for CD7, Oh, he has two active skills. Yeah, he's definitely better member because you know, two active skills. Two active skills means better coverage and more utility. But yeah, for his active skills. Yeah, in terms of leader skills and leader potential, I don't see much. I mean, I do think he's above average and he can definitely clear some stages, but I do think depending on how. It will depend on how you build him and what team composition you have in order to bring his real potential um, because his team skill compared to the other three is actually kind of short um, and not that impressive uh, but I still think he has really good things going for him but might struggle with super hard stages but I can definitely see him clearing some ultimate stages and some like new ultimate stages okay in terms of active skill though, CD7, remove tornado, characters attack increase by 7, turn 10 runes at fixed positions into light and heart runes of fixed numbers and fixed positions. By dissolving 7 light runes and 3 um, heart runes in the first batch, the character's damage will be dealt regardless of initial shield, enemy specific damage reducing resistance, and defense. So presumably, this uh, 10 runestones are going to be 7 light and 3 heart. Honestly, if you can do that, that is going to be pretty good. And Nanami is going to uh, launch a very powerful attack. Specifically, it can if it can ignore initial shield and specific damage reducing resistance. Honestly, if you add him into a Megumi team or a Gojo team, this could be a really good way to deal with enemies with damage reducing resistance because he gets a time 7 attack bonus and the other guys have like really good multipliers that can definitely help you make Kento Nanami into a very good burst card. In terms of a Kento Nanami team, this is also a good skill because Nanami himself already has um, he has a uh, anti runestone shield first batch ignore in his team and he also has a time 7 uh, attack bonus for a leader and ally. So this is definitely going to become a really powerful burst option for a Kento Nanami team. Outside of that, he's still pretty good burst option, specifically for a Gojo or a Megumi uh, team in my opinion. However, he also has a second active skill, CD3, which is actually really fast. 
The character enters or stays in a hyper state for 3 rounds. Turn 3 or 7 random runestones into um, light human runes. Non light runes rank first in priority. Honestly, uh, this skill is going to be pretty good for a Kento Nanami team. Outside of that, not super great. Um, what this means for a Kento Nanami team though, is that he is going to have 100% app time on Hyperstate. Hyperstate for 3 rounds, cooldown for 3 rounds means you can activate him again. This also means that you can generate a lot of light runes, which will help with your um, team skill here of dissolving one group of 7 or more light runes. So honestly, this active skill really really helps a Kento Nanami team as a leader. However, outside of that, unless you're running him in a... Actually, this might be really good for any light human leader in the future because it is a really quick way of getting 3 or 7 uh, attacking runes, which is actually not bad. And you also benefit from this uh, first active skill. So you know, he will become a good member for light humans in the future. Or for Xiang Yu or um, yeah, other light members right now. But in terms of... Uh, actually, you know what? The more I talk about it, I do think he is going to be a good member. In terms of general teams, this effect right here is not going to benefit as much. Because, you know, light humans might not be your runestone of choice for certain teams. But for a Nanami team, it's going to be great. And for any light human teams, it's also going to be great. And that is because he has double active skill. And not only do you benefit from this burst active skill, you are also going to get a good converter for light runes, which some light teams might really appreciate. So, you know, definitely a good thing to have. Uh, and I think he is a good member to get. In terms of leader, again, higher than average, but not super broken. And in terms of active skill, I think he is a good member skill for Gojo and Megumi. Honestly, also for Yuji. So he is a good member for any Jujutsu Kaisen team. And for light human teams and light teams in the future, I think he is also going to be a very decent member to have. Um, but yeah, so that is going to be all for Kento Nanami. Also bonding skills, yada yada yada. All not. Honestly, you know, really nice things to have for bonding skills. Okay, moving on, we have the non-jackpot cards, starting with Nobara Kugisaki. She is going to be an earth human with a CD7 active skill and the following effect. Turn the top row into 3 enchanted dark and 3 enchanted earth rooms, and the bottom row into 3 enchanted earth and 3 enchanted dark rooms. This means that it is going to be different in terms of the location of the rooms. For the top row, it's going to be 3 dark on the left and 3 earth on the right. And for the bottom row, it is going to be 3 earth on the left and 3 dark on the right. For one round, the character's attack increases by 5 times. And the character's damage will be dealt regardless of initial shield. If the leader and ally are Jujutsu Sorcerer members, the character's attack in the next round will be the same as this round. My opinion, this active skill is just okay. I think the generating runes is going to be pretty useful. However, because you are running a Jujutsu Kaisen team, and a lot of them are not, or all the jackpot leaders are not earth runes, uh, they do have runestone possession effect. But you don't directly benefit from having earth runes on the board. So. Generating earth rooms seems to be a bit of a, I don't know, not great, but it is still pretty good in terms of enemy skills if they require you to generate earth rooms or dissolve earth rooms. However, I think the most important thing about this active skill is going to be the times 5 character attack. It is going to be a really good burst option, and if you are running a leader and ally, you are going to be able to get this for 2 rounds. Specifically because your burst damage for this round will also carry over for the next round. So having two rounds of bursts is actually pretty good and pretty decent. 
In terms of uh, dealing damage regardless of initial shield, I think it is going to be pretty useful as well. But keep in mind that Gojo already has an innate um, initial shield break for all Jujutsu Sorcerer members. So this effect doesn't really work or it's kind of redundant in a Gojo team. So it is going to be mostly useful for Megumi, uh, Itadori, and Nanami. But uh, overall, I do think she is going to be pretty useful in a Jujutsu Kaisen team because of the two rounds of burst damage. In terms of members for other teams outside the Jujutsu Sorcerer archetype, I don't think she's going to be really uh, that useful because there's so many cards that do the same where you increase your own attack and also ignore initial shield. So there's not that many chances for her to take the stage since there's so many other cards in the game that do the same. The reason why she fits really well in the Jujutsu team is because of the fifth effect that allows you to have two rounds of burst damage and that in my opinion is pretty unique and pretty useful. Other than that, uh, I think this card might be nice to have and if you're going for the jackpot card you're most definitely going to get at least one copy. Or uh, we do have bonding skills but you know yada yada. Next we have Maki Senin which is going to be a fire human card. CD6 active skill and the following effect. Turn the top row into enchanted human fire runes and the bottom row into enchanted hard human runes. For one round, the character's attack increases by four times. If there are two or more Jujutsu Sorcerer members in the team, damage will be dealt regardless of fixed combo shield. Again, same thing as um, Nobara Kugisaki. I think her active skill is just okay. And it is very cater towards just a jujutsu team. Again, turning the top row and bottom row into fire and heart runes, not super impactful uh, for a jujutsu team or for any teams in general really. Four times characters attack also is nice, but because this active skill doesn't really have anything else tied to it, might be a little bit more rough to justify adding her into your team. Uh, here's the thing though, if you are running a Jujutsu Sorcerer team, you can ignore fixed combo shield, but a lot of the jackpot cards already ignore fixed combo shield, this, specifically the Jujutsu Sorcerer teams. So, I don't know, this, this card actually seems a little bit underwhelming, so I, you know, you are going to get a copy of this card if you go for the jackpot cards but overall i don't think she will see a lot of play specifically because she doesn't do much in terms of active skill next we have toge inumaki which is going to be a water human cd7 skill and has the following effect restore all runestones to normal state cd of all enemies will be delayed for one round if the leader is a jujutsu sorcerer member CDs of all enemies will be delayed for 2 rounds and you will fully recover your HP. Honestly, this active skill is not bad. This one's actually pretty good in my opinion. Restoring all runestones to a normal state is going to be very useful when you encounter weathered, petrified, electrified, condensed, um, uh, yeah. So those kinds of board debuffs are very good to remove. So that is pretty good. And delaying your enemies for one round is also very powerful. I think CD7 is going to be one of the faster crowd control skills in the game. Most of them are CD8 and above. So having a CD7 crowd control skill is going to be very useful. And if you have a Jujutsu Sorcerer member as a leader, this increases to two rounds of delay, which is very powerful. In my opinion, like the reason why so many people run the Chaos Craft is for the two round delay. And that is very useful. And so having that in an active skill also makes it pretty useful as well. So this card is pretty good, but it's not absolutely broken because the only thing it does is delay enemies for one round or two rounds. And it would be better, it would be absolutely broken if it had other utility built into it. Keep in mind this delay will probably not work on uncontrollable enemies. So that means that there are some cases that this card might also be dead in your team. 
uh, and you know if it had more utility it would be absolutely insane and definitely a must pull but as it is right now i think it's just okay and it's just pretty good okay next we have panda <laughs> its name is just panda and panda is a earth beast and has a cd7 skill and the following effect Explode heart runes to generate enchanted beast earth runes. If there are no hearts upon the skill activation, all runes will be turned into enchanted bee runes. Jujutsu Sorcerer and Beast members will have an attack increase of 1.6. Damage will be dealt regardless of puzzle shield. And effect 2 stays in play until heart runes are dissolved in the first batch. If for one round, if the leader is a beast or a Jujutsu Sorcerer member, Beast runes also possess the effect of all race runes. Damage received in the round will not lead to your defeat. So here's the thing, I think this card is absolutely amazing, but not for a Jujutsu Sorcerer team. I think this card is going to be an absolute powerhouse in beast teams. So given that none of the jackpot cards in this series are beasts, this means that this card is just going to be really good for other beast cards in the game. For example, Caesar or like Dagda, things like that. And that is because his active skill actually benefits beasts as well as Jujutsu Sorcerer members. And here, the fact that it also synergizes really well with the other panda in the game, which has the decreases the drop rate of heart runes to zero makes this so much poetic and really funny in my opinion uh, but yeah because of the utility it brings to the table i think it is going to be absolutely amazing for beast teams you ignore puzzle shield and this ignoring puzzle shield stays in play you well you get a 1.6 attack boost and ignore puzzle shield and that stays in play until heart runes are dissolved in the first batch and honestly that is an amazing continuous effect to have because not only do you get a, an attack boost but you also ignore puzzle shields and for beast teams this might be pretty useful as well also when you activate the active skill you will also not die because the damage received will not lead to your defeat for one round and that effect applies if your leader is a beast not only jujutsu members if it's a beast as well so this card is going to be really good for beast cards outside of Jujutsu themes and honestly in my opinion might be one of the must get cards in this series because of the support it will provide for beast members in the future. There is also a <laughs> team skill that actually also synergizes with our panda, our normal panda. Oh my, okay yeah no. So this is a must get card if you are planning on playing beast teams in the future. The fact that it decreases panda's active skill by 8, I mean loot playing panda, Yung Yang, to 8 means that you can activate your heart rune drop rate decrease to 0 from the get go. And honestly that is a, such a good thing because the problem with running cards that decrease the drop rate of hearts to zero is that you always had to wait until their cooldowns were ready. So when Zong, Light Yen, Light uh, Dark Xi, um, Him Dao, and Panda, you would have to wait eight rounds before you could activate it. The fact that you can just put these two together and activate Yun Yang the Panda from the get go is going to be absolutely amazing. And honestly, that in my opinion, definitely worth getting this Jujutsu Panda. Okay, and that was the last um, the last non-jackpot card. So overall, I think in terms of obtaining priority and level up priority, I think obtaining Panda first, definitely good because it doesn't really benefit your Jujutsu members, but it is going to be an absolute beast of a member. <laughs> four beast teams in the future and definitely worth getting uh, you don't want to miss out on this card specifically if you're planning on running beast teams in the future next is toge inumaki because of the delay skill and the board refresh 
Lastly, Nobura, Nobara Kugisaki for the two rounds of burst. And last is going to be Maki Zenin because her active skill is actually low key underwhelming and not that useful. But you know, uh, to each his own. But yeah, uh, that's going to be all for the non jackpot cards. And now we're going to go cover the exclusive Dragon Wars. As you know, a lot of the collaborations nowadays come with exclusive Dragon Wars. So now we get to see what we have in store for them. We have the Satoru Gojo sunglasses. Um, basically, uh, basically, you know, Dragon Wears are must-gets and gives you extra stat boosts. Uh, no problem. Um, but yeah, definitely worth getting the, all of them. Let's see. Uh, Dragon Wear, one second. Active skill, minus one. You know. I mean, they're Dragon Wears. They're all really good. Uh, active skill minus one after entering the stage. Megumi Fushiguro, yeah. Attack boost, attack boost. Honestly, there's not much to say about Dragon Wears except for the fact that you should get them because they're just very good. Uh, and definitely, it, prov it not only provides you a stat boost, it also gives you passive skills that also increase your damage output. So, you know, really good. For example, Panda recover HP every round and that is unconditional. So, you know, uh, but yeah, basically get all the Dragon Wars you can. Uh, next thing we have is going to be the skill level of material. And, you know, in my opinion, I think this was one of the changes that Matt had added that is really good to the game where Every collab has its own skill level of material, which means that you're not using baby harpies and harpies to just increase their levels. I think just by using the skill level of material, which they actually give us plenty of through the stages, through the shop, and through events, that it makes it really easy to level up the skill of your Jujutsu Kaisen or collaboration members. So, you know. Uh, that is good. This is going to be Call of Bucks Lunch, yeah. which is a funny uh, character, but you know. Uh, but yeah, so increase your level up, and then we have collect Sukuna fingers to get Ryomen Sukuna. Oh, okay, so now this is another item collecting mission. So we've had plenty of these at, at this point, but if you are not familiar with them, for every point of stamina that you spend, you can get one item and you can use those items in a special shop to redeem special prices such as materials, characters, etc. So in this case, you can use Sukuna fingers to collect Ryomen Sukuna. Here, you may exchange 10 Sukuna fingers for Ryomen Sukuna for one in the crossover shop. Then, at most, Ryomen Sukuna times two can be redeemed with 20 Sukuna fingers. Meanwhile, summoners may also get the character simply by purchasing the King of Curses gift pack. Uh, let's see, Ryoman Sukuna, it is going to be a dark demon. When the team has only dark members or demons, team attack increases by 10 times. HP and recovery times 2.8. By dissolving demon runes, team attack times 4. For each group of runes those dissolved in the first batch, combo count increases by 1. When 10 or more combos are made, Ryoman Sukuna attack increases by 2.5 times additionally. Actually, for a free card, that is a pretty decent leader skill. The only thing that's going to be sad is that you have a limit of 2 Ryoman Sukuna, so definitely keep both of them because you might want to have multiple of them in the team. For his team skill, oh wow, this is actually a very good free card. Okay, I might be wrong, let's see. Okay, so this is not your typical item collecting event. Normal item collecting events will give you one item per stamina, but because there is a limit of 20 Sukuna fingers, I think you have to meet certain conditions um, to obtain these fingers. But yeah, but this is a very good free card. Uh, for for yeah for an item collecting event the leader skill itself has very good multipliers this is a times 40 so this is almost like a 
80, 120 multiplier if you're for Sukuna, but a base of 40, which is honestly very good. Uh, and we also have a team skill when both the ally and leader and ally are Ryom and Sukuna. We get a very long team skill, which means that typically it's a good thing. 5 second extended runes to movement time. For each demon in the team, you get 20,000 shield points to the max of 120,000, which is very high. Burning and Sticky are nullified. At the beginning of each round, modify all runes to become demon runes, which synergizes very nicely with your leader skill and makes this condition uh, basically trivial since you are generating demon runes every round. We also have... Um, yeah, damage will be dealt regardless of equal combo shield and initial shield. When black and white zones are in play, Ryomen Sukuna's attack increases by 3 times. The more Ryomen Sukuna in the team, the more effects will be granted. 2 or more, all runestones possess the effect of all runes. 3 or more, Ryomen Sukuna skill CD minus 1. And attack times 3. More than 4, Ryomen Sukuna damage will be dealt regardless of fixed combo shield and defense. This one... Uh, so if you have leader and ally, that's 2. If you have another copy, that's 3. And I think for this fourth one, you might actually have to buy the gift pack, which makes me a little bit uncomfortable. The fact that one of the team skills is locked behind a paywall. Hopefully there's another way to obtain another Ryomen Sukuna because it seems that from the item collecting mission, you can only collect two. Uh, but yeah, you can only collect two so at most you will have three free ones if you count your ally so having four is going to be difficult but if you are able to this passive team skill is going to be amazing since you can just ignore fixed combo shield passively as well as equal and initial shield and honestly those are very good utility and shield breaking effects you also acquired the main expansion malevolent shrine which creates black and white zone, which helps you obtain this times 3 attack bonus. Upon skill activation and at the end of the round, turn all runestones into runestones of all types of fixed numbers and fixed positions. These two effects will stay in play within the wave. So again, same thing with Gojo and Megumi, where it is going to be very useful for teams with... Um, with, against enemies with multiple HP bars. Um, yeah, very good leader. I think this is an amazing leader given the fact that it's a free to play card. Uh, so definitely get this card if you can. For his active skill, we have a CD7 active skill with the following effect. Fully recover HP. If the leader is a dark member or a demon, refresh the protective shield. For one round, damage received in the round will not lead to your defeat. Launch a dark counterattack as much of a thousand times the damage received to the attacking enemies regardless of defense and enchanted runestone shield. In the next round, the character launches um, in the next round the characters attack time six and launches five extra attacks of each attribute. Um, summoners may still be defeated because of it. Okay. So you might die, is what they're saying. Like, if you die, it's not the skill's fault. Uh, actually, wait, that doesn't make sense. Well, that's dumb. But basically, this active skill is honestly pretty good for a free-to-play card. It does a lot of utility. It gives you protective shield, counterattack, and not only that, it also gives you ability to break the five element shield that some enemies have. And in my opinion, it's one of the most annoying shields in the game. So in, in my opinion, a pretty decent active skill, all things considered. Specifically because he's a free to play card with a good leader skill. Honestly, you cannot go wrong by going for this card and leveling it up to max uh, dual max status. Uh, but yeah, we also have a new mini game, which allow you to three levels yeah you can get harpy knight black keys oh interesting mini game fun things to have very fun 
Now we have Ultimate Stage, Carnage of Idol Transfiguration. We are going to get Mahito, which is a water demon card. Has two active skills actually, that is pretty good. CD6, by tapping a runestone of the magic of elements twice, turn that type into water demon runes, enchanted water demon runes. Honestly, a very simple skill. And if it, this were its own active skill, then it would be kind of useless. But because he has a second active skill, I think it is more worth it. CD8, petrify all enemies to alter their attributes into dark. Each member launches two extra water attacks and damage dealt to dark enemies by water members times three additionally. Honestly, this effect is really good uh, because normally when you petrify an enemy, it becomes earth. The fact that you can petrify an enemy and make it dark is very unique and honestly very good as well. Also, normally when water cards inflict status effects, they transform them into fire to obtain the attribute advantage, which means that having a water card that can petrify is also very unique because normally water cards freeze enemies. And now more often they also ignite, but very rarely do they petrify. And not only do this card petrify, it only tr also transforms into dark. But in, overall, I think this active skill is definitely good to get because of the unique combination of controlling skills that it has. It petrifies and transforms into dark, which is honestly very unique and definitely worth getting just in case you encounter a stage that requires this specific combination of effects. Okay, so that is going to be all for the Jujutsu Kaisen collaboration news this week. And we are going to go uh, TOS Battle Pass. Oh, that's it. So new Battle Pass is coming our way with a new character, which is going to be a tug at Heartstring Kejuro CD1. Uh, it is a reskin of Kejuro, which is also CD1. Uh, but this time, it, she is going to be a water demon instead of a light demon. So, according to the number of accumulated battle rounds, turn runestones into demon water runes. If the skill is activated when accumulation reaches max, runestones will be turned into enchanted demon water runes instead. Counting resets when the skill is activated. Basically, this is just a water version of your normal Kejudo, which honestly, she wasn't a bad card to begin with. Except she has seen less play nowadays because her active skill does not include any type of utility. Which is also the issue with this uh, battle pass card. You don't really have a lot of utility. And you know. Uh, it might be good to have in your inventory. But nowadays team slots are more valuable. And having a card that does more things is better than having a card that just generates uh, attacking runes. So yeah, in my opinion, this battle pass card, while nice, I don't think is what we need in the current meta right now. But yeah, and that is going to be, well, I mean, we have the usual battle pass news, a new outfit and a new uh, dragonware for the paid version of the battle pass. And in this case, this dragon where, let's see, one round, one second, 1.6, 1.3. In this case, I don't think this dragon where is worth paying the full battle pass, but you know, to each their own. If you want to pay for the battle pass, go ahead. Uh, just keep in mind, it is your resources. Um, and so, yeah, I'm typically of the opinion that the battle pass is not really worth purchasing because everything else that you can get from the battle pass you can get somewhere in the game yes you do get more resources from the battle pass and you also get exclusive rewards such as the outfit the frame the dragon wear but honestly i personally don't need the outfit the frame or the dragon wear and the rewards with enough time you will be able to obtain them as well so in terms of spending money, uh, I personally wouldn't spend it on the battle pass. But if you have extra expendable income or extra resources that you would like to spend, uh, it is your decision. But just keep in mind to keep your financial well-being in mind 
first before you spend any money in any of these games because at the end of the day these are just gacha games and uh, it will not replace uh, your real life you know uh, but yeah that is going to be all for this week's GNN so just to recap we have a new collaboration which is the Jujutsu Kaisen collaboration with four new jackpot cards unlike the Attack on Titan collaboration in this one you are guaranteed Gojo at 35 pulls but you are not guaranteed any of the other characters um, so unlike Eren which was guaranteed at 35 and Levi guaranteed at 40 this one doesn't have uh, two guarantees it only guarantees you Gojo at 35 and the other three are going to be given uh, randomly if you're lucky and in my opinion I think that is pretty good uh, honestly I think that's even that's kind of better but also worse you know um, at the very least with attack on titan you could guarantee two jackpot cards if you spend enough diamonds in this one if you're really really unlucky you might not get one of the jackpot cards so I think that was one of the biggest things in the past for me is that because only one of them is guaranteed sometimes you get unlucky and you don't get the other one uh, in my painful experience during the Konosuba collaboration I got seven aquas and I got zero darkness so now that there's three jackpot cards that you might miss <laughs> that might get painful but that also means that during raid up because there's four jackpot cards and non four non jackpot cards the rate of jackpot cards is going to be increased so overall you are going to get more jackpot cards whether you get the one that you want that is up for debate but um but yeah overall more jackpot cards equals more cards to collect higher chances that you're going to fill up your inventory with non jackpot cards so the big question here is the is it worth pulling for this seal given that there is the chance of so many non jackpot cards so first of all pull during raid up for sure and unless you're creating content or you want to enjoy the jujutsu teams from day one i will say don't pull until raid up because pulling during raid up is the best decision you can make if you are saving your diamonds and want to maximize your diamond efficiency second if you're going all the way for a guaranteed gojo which is not a bad thing you are also potentially going to get many jackpots during the way during raid up so assuming you are able to get a full collection in one cycle getting gojo um honestly that is not bad <laughs> Typically for new jackpot cards, it is a 35 uh, pull and well right now or it used to be 35 pulls for a jackpot card with some of them being like really bad jackpots or really bad non jackpot cards. In this scenario, I do believe that Gojo is worth it and I also believe that Megumi, um, Megumi Fushiguro is also really worth it um, and so if you can get a copy of him, it is pretty good. Yuji Itadori, um, he might get better. Hopefully they do some skill adjustments on him, but not bad to have. And Nanami also not bad to have. And again, I think personally, in terms of non-jackpot cards, Panda is a must get. And given that there's only four non-jackpot cards, the chances of you getting at least one copy when you go for Gojo is going to be pretty high. But Panda and Toge Inumaki are pretty good. The other two, eh. But these two are absolutely incredible and Panda in my opinion is a must get so at the very least get a copy of Panda but honestly if you're going 35 pulls in for Jujutsu Kaisen series I do believe it is worth just because of the strength of Gojo. Uh, Gojo is a really powerful leader, has very good multipliers, has an amazing team skill and a very broken domain expansion. His active skill is also pretty good uh, and ignore this team skill right here you do not have to run a mono gojo team to make him good that's because his active skill is good but it does not cover everything and if you encounter a 
an enemy that has an enemy, enemy skill that falls outside the range of this active skill, running a mono gojo team will kill you because you have no way to counter it. That being said, having more than one is honestly not that bad. So getting two gojos if you get lucky is also pretty good because you can use the second one as a wild card element in your team. But I wouldn't go beyond having two copies of him. Um, because again, right now in the current meta, team slots are very important and you might want to have extra team slots to deal with different types of enemy skills rather than having multiple gojos. And you know, uh, yeah, uh, even though he does benefit from the main expansion, all Satoru Gojos will have their attack increased and you have different elements. I still think it's better to run a variety, a diversity of team members to be able to deal with different enemy skills. But yeah, so Gojo is pretty good. I do think it is worth going for him. And because going for him will give you some of the other jackpot cards along the way, I will say it's good. And here's the thing, if you only get Gojo and one more jackpot card, I would recommend using your tombstone to change for Megumi or obtain Megumi Fushiguro. And that is because even though Itadori is good and, and um, Nanami is also good, their active skills are not that great. And when they fall off the meta, collaboration cards are only useful for their active skills. And so if we are only looking at active skills, this active skill right here is absolutely broken with a lot of utility, a lot of flexibility, and definitely worth having in your inventory for future teams. So if you only obtain one jackpot card, you get really unlucky. Use your, uh, was it glory stone? Uh, use your glory stone to exchange for Megumi Fushiguro because his active skill is the best one out of all three of them and definitely worth having even after the collaboration ends. Although if you pull your rate up, it might be unlikely that you don't get more than one jackpot, but you know, uh, bad luck still happens and I hope the odds are in your favor. But yeah, so just to keep going on the, with the recap, we have the new jackpot card, so, uh, Gojo Satoru, uh, which is a very good leader, very good team skill, very good craft skill, and an amazing active skill as well. So in terms of power level, I do think he is going to be up there in the current meta, even with the likes of lower tier black gold cards such as Nesoi. Uh, Nesoi, honestly, I think doesn't really deserve the black gold card status, but Gojo does reach that level. So I guess Gojo does have the power of a very low tier black gold card. He of course doesn't reach the level of Yingzhen, Xiangyu, Ziyo, or like Lilith when they came out, but I do think he has the power level of Nesoi. Um, and maybe like Black Gold Eve. Uh, but yeah, so he is very powerful. Itadori, honestly, a little bit underwhelming still, so I wouldn't be sad if you miss out on him. Uh, Megumi, really good leader, also an amazing active skill. Definitely worth having in your inventory after the event ends. Nanami, uh, pretty good leader, not super broken, above average in my opinion, but I do think he is going to be a very good light human support card in the future, given his generation of attacking runes, but also having a second active skill that actually does uh, provide some utility. We also have four jackpot, non-jackpot cards, uh, which two of them are just okay. Toge Inumaki is actually pretty good in terms of delaying enemies, and Panda is absolutely broken for beast teams in the future. He won't be that useful in Jujutsu Kaisen teams, but he will be very useful for beast teams in the future. So in my opinion, it is a must get uh, from the seal if you're planning on running beast teams in the future. We also have new Dragon Wear, which as always, just get it and just equip it because it is a stat boost and three passive skills that you are granted for free. Um, level up card and we also have a new item collecting event collecting sukuna fingers which you should definitely do because this is one of the best free to play cards that i've ever seen in in my time uh playing the game this is a very good leader skill really good team skill as well and 
a really good active skill so overall a very good card for a free to play as a free to play card and if you're if you don't have demon leaders this could become your demon leader in the future uh but yeah new mini game and a new ultimate stage which honestly this ultimate stage card is also a very recommended uh, i do highly recommend getting a dual max copy because his controlling skill is very unique in terms of combination water cards only usually provide freeze and ignite more often and they usually alter their attributes of the enemies into fire or water so having a card that can petrify and turn enemies into dark on a water card is absolutely um it's not a must get but highly recommended to get just in case uh, you need it in the future and lastly we have a new battle pass with a new uh, reskin of kajuro which has the same active skill However, keep in mind that this skill doesn't really provide any utility and it only provides attacking runes, which in the current meta, I do believe that team slots are very valuable and each team slot should provide at least some utility for you to be able to slot it in your team for harder stages. And that is going to be all for this week's GNN. So please let me know in the comments if I missed out on anything or said anything wrong and stay tuned on my YouTube channel for more Tower Saviors content. I do post clear videos, guides, and other um, variety of Tower of Saviors content, so keep an eye out on that. But for now, stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you next time. Bye everyone!